and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. I'm Jules, your co-host. If you're new to this type of work, please start with episode one. If you're an intermediate, please start with episode 98. And if you are advanced, please start with episode 200. With me, as always, to share her insights and her wisdom is a spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Hey, Kelly, how's it going? It's we're out shopping for houses so you know okay the the process has started yeah i I wasn't planning on it because you know it's eight months before the end of our lease but uh the landlady asked me she's like are you staying and i was like nope (laughs) she was like oh well i guess that's a lot of notice and i'm like yep so, you know, I don't know if we're going to rent or if we're going to buy. We went out and looked at a place to buy today that ended up being a lot more money than he said it was going to be on the phone when we went to go out to look at it. It's it's new construction. The land was gorgeous, up really high on the mountain. But he wanted $675,000 for a 2,000 square foot house on what was basically, you know, 4,400, like an acre. And Ooh, yeah, that's a lot. And he's like, oh, well, this is in line with the market. I'm like, no, <laughs> like, no, I could be in Bajo right next door to one of my best friends and right on the water on the big river for the same price for a bigger house. So not that I want to live in Bajo. I don't, but I could be right. So, yeah. He was dreaming on his pricing, but we're looking at something again tomorrow. So we'll see, or uh, Saturday, and uh, we'll see what happens there. And we're going to look at some rentals. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to buy yet or not. We'll see. We're just going to play around with it. In the meantime, there you I'm go. What? Happily, you know, planning my retreat and uh, putting together some amazing stuff for the for the Sacred Power and Purpose Mystery School, and you know, all the fun things. So. It's like that. Well, you are off to a very fast and furious oh, pace no working God. this year. <laughs> oh, my God. You're starting the year out with a bang. Let's just go ahead and just start, you know, putting together a retreat and yeah. shop for a house. Well, that, the retreat is the <laughs> least of the things that I am doing. That's the terrifying part. I am completely mm-hmm. revamping the website. I'm SEOing everything. I am splitting the website into two websites so that I'm doing the Sacred Power and Purpose Mystery School on one side and the Spiritual Coach Certification Program on a different site. And yeah, it, it's a whole shebang. There's going to be a whole revamp of everything. We're going to be coming out <laughs> proud and strong. And oh, we're Lord. Be new socials for the Sacred Power and Purpose <laughs> Mystery School for its own thing. And I mean, it's just okay. massive. Huge, huge change coming. We're do. I just started a new channel on YouTube specifically for all the spiritual entrepreneur stuff, so that I can split stuff out. It's gonna be amazing. Okay. Yeah, I was not <laughs> kidding when I said I've got a lot. You have a lot. I have a lot. Well, and yeah. oh, this might come up. Signed up what? with the uh, Ethereal Network. We're going to be on their TV platform. So the Ethereal Network. Is oh. Too- doing a tv platform much like netflix or hulu okay okay the ethereal network um and so we're going to be on that platform uh as a tv show so oh wow yeah so the ethereal network is that its own like app it's like netflix has this app it's its own thing yeah oh wow it's launched yet um you know it's it's coming but we are signed up for it. So we will be having a TV program. So, Well, there you go. We are just we... keep growing by leaps and brown, bounds. That's and That's it, baby. Hold on. Hold on to your butts, kiddos. This is a transformational shaman. Would you expect any less? <laughs> <laughs> just saying. That's so accurate. That's so accurate. <laughs> You've known me a long time. If you so... thought the train was moving fast before, yeah, yeah. not so much. Buckle up. <laughs> well, you and I have been mm. together for almost like four years now. It's like three and a half years, right? That we've been working together. So, because you came in, I think in so. Right? I lose you track. Came into 2020, uh, you came into the the 
what was inner peace and is now welcome to woo. Yeah. Welcome to the woo. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that was, that was April of 2020. <sighs> so yeah. Oh, wow. That's uh, it's been a while. It's It's been a minute. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right. Well, today we're talking about Tantra. We are. So years ago, I actually used to teach Tantra. And um, I, I stopped teaching it because I got tired of people asking me for threesomes. Because it's inevitably what would happen. <laughs> we get phone calls. If you are out there and you are thinking about going to a Tantra instructor, please do not do this to them. They are not sex workers, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. So I Okay, so so for that reason. But we're gonna talk about Tantra today. Do not ask me for a threesome. Okay. As long as that rule is out there, we're we're good. All right. I want to I want <laughs> we gonna back up a minute. What the hell this is Tantra? Is and what is the <laughs> We just, we didn't, we didn't put the toe in it. We just dove right into it. Well, it's true. What do you expect? Okay. Well, true that. Okay. Yeah. So, so for those kiddos who don't know, <laughs> what, what, what is a Tantra? Is it okay. a thing? Is it a verb? Is it a noun? Is it, what is it? So Tantra is actually a spiritual practice. It's a Tibetan spiritual practice. And it is much bigger than it is taught and as in the U.S., um, in most of Western society, actually. The reason that, so in Western culture, uh, Tantra is typically taught as a sexual practice. Um, and oh, okay. It's easier. It, it's a spiritual sexual practice, right? It, it is a small portion of a much larger um, spiritual practice, the, the sexual side of it. But because sex sells in the Western culture, that's the way that they bring people into Tantra. And the challenge is that a lot of the Tantra instructors out there, well, not a lot, but some of the major ones, um, are only teaching that aspect. And, um, Oh, you know, okay. It's, it's okay to learn that, but you end up imbalanced. You end up with your, your second chakra, which is your sexual chakra, the, 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 um, the sacral, um, your second chakra gets way overdeveloped. And so I've actually had several Tantra, uh, instructor trainees come through my training because they wanted to balance their chakras. They wanted to be able to do the work in the other chakras and not just in the second chakra. Right. And so they came okay. through and did the, the woo series to, to accomplish that. Because what happens is if you end up imbalanced in the second chakra, then, then you end up being not so great around your sexuality and your boundaries. And so not so great on that. That's where, where essays okay. to happen, right? So, ah, okay. Not so great. So, you know, but I mean, not to say that you can't learn some tantric skills in the bedroom without having that happen. You absolutely can. It is entirely fine to do that. But if you're going to become an instructor, you really do want to, and you're going deep enough into the practice that you want to do something to balance it. So if you're out there and you're a Chantra instructor and listening to me, please consider doing something that will balance out the other chakras so that you are fully um, developed in that, in, in the wholeness of the work, right? So I'm, I'm like wandering a field here. I'm, I got up at four o'clock this morning and I've been going ever since and it's four o'clock in the afternoon now. So it's been 12 hours. And so I'm a little scattered today. I apologize. We're going to back up. So let's talk about okay. the spiritual practice. Yeah. Yeah. So what, 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 what is yeah. the practice? So the practice is it... essentially at its core. It is the balancing of the masculine and the feminine within. Okay. Now, before you come for me, all right, we are going to use the terms masculine and feminine, and we're going to use them in the traditional sense of those. And I am not saying male and female. I'm saying masculine and feminine. And I'm saying it this way for a reason. So you non-binaries out there, it's not because I don't like you. It is because this is how it is traditionally taught. And in order for you to understand and, and, and correlate the things that I'm going to say today, if you decide to go to the texts, I'm going to give it to you in this format. 
If you want to modify your language and do things differently, that is up to you. I do encourage that you understand the premises of the process before you change things, right? Learn things the way that they were taught to you before you modify, okay? That way you're not changing things that you don't understand yet, okay? So That's fair. don't come for me around my terminology. There's a reason for it. Mm. Okay. So we're going to balance the masculine and feminine within. So in this practice, the, the understanding is the masculine is, is the male energy, right? It is okay. the energy of creating the container. Okay. The, the male holds the container so that the female can be water within it. Now, does this have to be man and woman? No, it has to be one partner holding the masculine energy and one partner holding the female energy. Masculine and feminine. Okay. They, the, your gender does not matter. Okay. So okay. it is simply who's holding what energy, right? So the masculine energy holds a solid container. If you do not hold a solid container, the feminine energy will freeze because otherwise it will drip mm -hmm. out of the cracks in the masculine container. Right? Okay. So now this is if you're in a pairing, right? This is where the practice goes into a sexual side. This is what you'll learn in the, the Western culture traditions, right? Eastern culture traditions, this, this interrelationship between two people is a very small portion of the work. The vast majority of the work is balancing the masculine and feminine within you so that you are the masculine that holds a container for yourself. And you are the feminine that can be water within inside that container, right? This is what we talk about okay. in the Wu Squared program with where you're solidifying your energetic container, your sense of self, your identity. We're solidifying mm -hmm. that masculine side that can hold the container for yourself, right? That's the okay. key here. Now, uh, traditional Tantra has two types, two two paths that's the word i'm looking for oh this is gonna be a fun one today <laughs> brain is going done I'm like sit there for another 30 minutes baby you'll be all right okay so the traditional tantra has two paths there's the white path and the red path okay the white path okay. is the healing path and the healing path is much of what we talk about in our our um our personal growth work and our spiritual growth work. It's, it's about doing that inner work, right? And the red path is the path that includes the sexuality side. Okay. Okay. So when you, when you hear about the Kadoshka, um, and mm -hmm. you're, you're like, huh, what? It's Q U E yeah. D O S H K A. I believe Kadoshka. Kadoshka. Um, when you hear about the Kadoshka or you hear about a sacred prostitute, um, you know, things of, of that, Jules, like, I have no idea what you're talking about. So okay. I've never heard this in my life. Yeah. So in the red path, uh, there is, uh, you're doing that balance of the masculine and feminine within a sexual context, right? But you're also doing, okay. um, a, what can be known as sexual healing work. And so the Kadoshka, oh. the, uh, sacred prostitute, which is a, a an archetype. Right. I'm not talking about people. Okay. Who okay. Why is that? Although some people do, I did for a while. Um, uh, it is about doing, uh, it's sex, it's healing through sexuality. So it is, okay. you know, a, 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 it's a Dakini role. And so I'm again, throwing out a random term. Okay. So Dakini <laughs> is, uh, someone who is, who has come into this life with the knowledge of sexual healing energies they didn't need to be taught they just in inherently know it came in with them to this lifetime i was one of those people i came in i automatically okay. knew how this worked nobody had to explain it to me i was just like yep this is where we go this is what we do this is how it goes da, 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 da. for for probably a decade and a half i identified as a, a as a sacred prostitute not that i took sex money for sex i did not but it was within my relationships right um but i did a lot of energy healing work in that regard and so they called them sacred okay. prostitutes back in the day because 
in uh you know ancient babylon and in that time frame there were actual temples to the goddess astarte who is a version earlier version sumerian version of of aphrodite okay and okay of love right and so astarte was a, a earlier more rough and tumble version right so okay um, okay the idea was that you know the men would go off to war they would have horrible experiences they would have ptsd they would come back to the temples to the goddess temples for healing before they would go home and so the goddess temples would take them in and they would help them to process and some of that processing was through sacred prostitution right it was through the, the act of love and bringing them back into themselves and through through the connection to the divine that was only available through a temple priestess who understood how to make that connection for their partner. Okay. So there's okay. a whole practice around it. And okay. this work is sacred work. And, you know, in our culture, you know, sex is, sex is so not sacred right um it, it's actually you know profane in a lot of ways and so the the practice of tantra the sexual side the red path of tantra is the act of bringing your sacred connection to another person into a union level the the end goal of uh, a tantric connection in the sexual form is to achieve the the uh, state of union in which you two become one and that's on the energetic where you're literally overlapping and blending your energy with the other person and oh that's an cool energetic aspect to sexuality that can be achieved through that process and okay there's actually energetic orgasms that can happen in that context uh, they're called Kriyas, K-R-I-Y-A. Kriyas, okay. Yeah. Kids, we learn all kind of vocabulary. We're going to have to have a spelling test on this and, you know, use it properly in a sentence. Yeah. Duh. Ooh, can't wait to, di- what was it, diagram these sentences. Mm. Mm. So, mm. so, so, so it way surpasses the physical yes. act. Yes. And this is a union that will transcend that where it's on the energetic. Yes. You can have an out of body experience. There are ways wow. to manipulate the energy as you're, you're touching your partner. You can actually move the, their energy and, and adjust it up their spine and, and pull it forward. And there's all sorts of ways to do different energy work within that context. And Ooh, that's fun. It is it is very fun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that would be quite fun. fun. <laughs> um, and it's, um, it, it is a, it, it's a high end skill, right? Because you have to be able to. So for a lot of people, women in particular, but men as well, because for different reasons, usually for men, it's usually performance issue for women. It's usually body issue. You know, I, I don't mm-hmm. know how I, I don't know if I can't be in my body not perfect, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, I can't get present. I got the running list of to do's in my head, so there's no way I can get excited, right? You know, so right. women, that tends to be them, and men tend to be around performance based. I've got to be the man, I've got to last long, I've got to make her come, all the things, right? Um, yeah, okay. And so it's, it's, and not to say that it can't be that way for each other too you know there there's definitely issues in both sides but traditionally you know when you talk to people most often these are the things that yeah, in general yeah or in general but um and and they have each other as well so both both have both things so anyway if you can get out of your freaking head which is the thing right you have to be able to get out of mm-hmm. your head ar- around all of those yeah things whatever your particular issue is Mm-hmm. Be able to be present with your body because it is a body based practice. Right? Okay. Be present with your energy because it is an energy based process. 
And then to be present with your partner, because it is a partner-based process. Well, it doesn't have to be. You can do this by yourself. It is possible to do it by yourself. Um, but it is uh, more intense, usually, with a partner, uh, and unless you've got a lot of practice with it. So, um, and then you have to be willing to release uh, your need to be separate and individual from the other in order to achieve that union state. In Tantra, what they talk about is that uh, the, the, the feminine is the entry point into the state of union. And that is because the woman is the, the container for the state of union, which is the baby, right? So, you know, there's... Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. The woman holds okay. the womb, the woman holds the yeah. energy, right? Yeah. That's, that's okay, the, I got you. The, the concept there. Um, and so, you know, it's often, men will often say that they find intimacy through sex, and women will often say that they feel sexual when they feel intimate already. Right. And so that's the. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. The, the difference, right, is that the, the woman feels the intimacy and creates the container for the man to feel it within the, the form of having sex. That's sort of the okay. construct there that they, they talk about. So, uh, you know, this is it, it's a practice, first and foremost. And the the goal is union. The goal is not orgasm. In fact, in Tantra, it is a common practice for men to practice. Uh, uh, God, the term has just killed me. It's just gone. Um, it's, it's, they don't ejaculate. It's to withholding ejaculation. So, that they oh, are, okay. Um, and, and that's because the goal is not orgasm. The goal is connection. The goal is union, right? It's not about. Okay. So this is the other thing is that in Western culture, it's like, you know, how long does sex last? Eh, three minutes for on average, <laughs> 15 if you're lucky, right? And yeah, yeah. In Tantra, you're not actually going for penetration, if at all. You know, you might, but you might not. Um, and if you do, you're usually not moving a lot. So there's a position in Tantra called Yab Yum. And that position is where the man sits uh, in cross-legged position. And then the woman sits astride him and crosses her legs behind him and sits on his back. I saw that. And, and then they stare into each other's eyes. So they are penetrated, but they are staring into each other's eyes. And they are not moving, usually, or not moving much. And the idea is that you're just staying connected and you're, you're running energy. There is a breath work process that you run. I was going to say, that's, that's like what I saw. In unison, right? So you, you breathe together in and out, and then you begin to breathe opposite. So he breathes in, she breathes out. So you're breathing in. Oh, wow. Breath. And so that is part of the creation of the union process. And you're cycling the energy through your bodies down through his body, up through hers, down and up and out through her crown, back into his crown, crown and back down the body and back up. And so you're cycling the energies and that's how you're bringing your energies together to find union, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah there was, um, I, I just, it, God, it's been years since I've seen this, but there was a documentary on HBO. Don't ask me what the title thing was, but they were doing the breathing, yes. and it just popped into my head that I saw this, and that's what I, I remember seeing. The lady was sitting on, on man's lap, and they were like that, mm -hmm. but it, it was like they were – I mean it was intense, but it was all with the look, and it was breathing, and it and there was a – um how you – uh, yes. 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 It's another thing. Because I, I remember her. Context. And, and I want to be clear. You don't have to do this in a penetrative state. You can do this fully clothed and you can do it with, you know, whatever gender you want. Right. There's somebody's on the bottom. Somebody is on the top. Right. Um, so, you know, you can do this. I, I've done this in a workshop space. And, you know, it, I don't know if you remember. Um, I don't I'm pretty sure I told the story, but 
I had gone to the grand opening of the Galeana Retreat Center in upstate New York. I had gotten into a workshop with a partner. I had been chanting all the way there. And so I was in an ecstatic state in the three and a half hours I'd been chanting, I open, I receive. And I arrived and we went straight into this workshop because I, you know, uh, yeah, because that's where we were. And we, I did this. Uh, exercise with this man I found very attractive and it was mutual and uh, you know we were in Yab Yum and in fully clothed but Yab Yum and we were doing the breath of fire which I don't remember what it is you'll have to look it up because I blocked it from my memory because this happened uh, I was running so much energy when we were done that I could not stop running energy I was literally on fire I was like just running so much energy. I could, I was like throwing it into the woods as fast as I could. I was grounding as much as I could. I could not make it stop. I begged for Uh-oh. food and they weren't ready to serve. And they were like, nope, we're not giving you food. I'm like, I don't think you understand. <laughs> They're like, I don't think you understand. I'm like, okay, not messing with the cooks. No need. And so ultimately I had to find two young men. They were like 18, 20, you know, I I wanted to pick healthy ones because this was going to hurt. And I said, can I ground through you? It's going to be a lot. And they went, uh, yeah. Okay. And I went, oh, can I put my hands on both of their chests and, and grounded the energy through them and their eyes flew open and they're like, (gasps) Like, I did warn you. And they were like, yes. I'm like, that was the only way I got it to stop. So I completely, re- you know, erased the, the breath of fire from my memory because I don't want to have that experience again. But, but I probably would not have had that experience had I not been chanting for three and a half hours when I first showed up and, you know, been in an ecstatic state and really you know, I had the hots for this guy and, you know, all the things, right? Yeah. You guys are learning so much more about me today than you ever knew before. <laughs> ne- See, we never knew the rest of the story. See? Mm, so I will tell you that this is, uh, <laughs> this is why I've always said that I have to write, if, if I write my memoirs, I'm going to have to write half of them under an assumed name because nobody's ever going to believe that the, all this stuff that has happened to one person um, because that's how interesting my life has been. And yeah, so I might pick the assumed name for the first half because that one's the more risque. But yes. <laughs> okay, so kiddos, email Kelly your suggestions for her pen name that she's going to write her memoirs under. I love it. We're going to make this a group activity. <laughs> Email her, drop it in the Facebook chat, whatever, comment, just wow. just your your suggestions. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, this would be a ah. to say that if you've been, like, avoiding coming into classes because you've got sexual issues that you are too afraid to talk about, yeah, I, I you can. Come on in. Me. You can't shock me. Let me just say, there is, yeah, you can't shock me. (laughs) Well, there was a moose and there was an elephant. and Yeah. Yeah. That that one would be really, really mild. So, yeah. (laughs) That's all I can say. Yeah. One of my favorite stories is is, is still when... One of my favorite stories was still you, what was it? The They had a, you, let's see, it was at a retreat and I think it was clothing optional and there was like a maintenance dude or somebody that was there and, oh, and you're yeah. like out with your friends going, oh, we're going to make his day and just like yeah. waved at him. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, that was, that was with Kathy actually. Uh. Was it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was a lemon's gate and, and uh it was on Four Quarters Farm, which is a clothing optional site and uh and it had been kinda cold that year. Um so very few people had gone optional. And uh the the Portageon guys used to to fight over that route because they'd get to go and see naked people. And uh 
So, you know, every time they would come in, they'd be looking and looking and looking like, you know, where are they? Where are they? And then they'd see us and we were dressed and they're like, oh, so sad. And so on, on his way in, we, he, he passed by and he, we could see that he was so sad that he wasted his trip out here. The only time he, he got to do it. And so we had a conversation over breakfast while he was pumping them. And everybody was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's make his day. And so as he came back out, we all stood up and lined up and the women pulled their shirts up and the guys pulled their kilts up. <laughs> We're like, thank you. <laughs> and gave him a proper farewell and thank you. It was so funny because he looked out the window and he put his two hands out like honk, honk, like he was honking titties. <laughs> honk, honk. <laughs> That's awesome. And this is the pagan world where nobody cares if they're naked. It's a body. It's just there a you body. Cares, right? <laughs> just yeah. a body. Yeah. So that that's oh. that's so funny because I just put out the uh, I'm a shaman. Of course, I like to dance, dance naked around a fire thing. <laughs> of course you do. Of course I do. I'm a shaman. Of course I have a library card to the Akashic Records. I'm a shaman. Of course I. Of course I don't need a GPS to navigate the astral. You know all of that. So all that to say, kids, trust me, you can't shock this woman. I promise no. you. She's like, oh, well, that reminds me of the, and then she'll have a story. Yes. I don't care what the topic is. I don't care what you think you've done. <laughs> That's been like, oh, she's never going to believe this. Girl, she done been there, done that, wrote the book, and wrote the instruction manual on how not to do it. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so true. <laughs> I come by it honestly, though. My mother was was a, a, a fellow yes girl. I call it yes girling, right? It's like, you want to do this? Yeah, of course I want to do that. I don't know what it sure. is. Sure. Try it. Yeah, yeah. Is it going to kill me? No. It, is it likely to kill me? No. I'm in, right? It, I'm it, in. That, that's it, right? And so, <laughs> so my uh, my mother used to tell stories to her her office mates, right, to her coworkers. And uh, one day she started in on a story and, and her office mate looked at her and said, I don't know why you bother telling these things. Nobody believes you. There's no way you've done these things. And my mother just shut up and she just wrote something down on a piece of paper and handed it to her coworker and the coworker looked at it and said, what's that? She said, that's my daughter's phone number. You feel free to verify any story I've told you. And she looked at her and she was like, they're, they're true. My mom's like, why would I waste time wait, making up a story? My life has been too interesting. She was like, oh my God. And and my mom was tame compared to me. Let me just say that. So, yeah. I drove an 18 wheeler when I was awesome. 15. Let's do the math. So, yeah. At 60 miles an hour, hopped into the seat at 60 miles an hour and drove. Yeah. There you go. Been on a nuclear submarine during an emergency blow. That one usually wins the party. So, the wonders yeah, I, I got I got nothing for that. The wonders got nothing. Of the I even know what the Mariner. Yeah, you know, dependence cruises. So look, yeah, I'm doing good to to look up what tantra means and that it 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 literally means woven together. I was like, woohoo! <laughs> well, I'm sitting here, you know, tr looking through different experiences and going, nope, can't tell that one on air. Nope, can't tell that one on air. Can't tell that one. Can't tell. Nope. Mm -mm, not going to happen. <laughs> That's funny. That's I funny. I, I had to wait to talk about this till my dad died. <laughs> so I wanted to get back to him. <laughs> so, so when you were teaching Tantra earlier, yes. all right, many moons ago, right, at what you were saying, right? Mm -hmm. Did you ever have anyone that like was like, oh my God, I don't know about this. And it's like, we're going in, and then they just totally like, and I don't mean this in a way, you know, sexual way, but like they they blossomed as in like they had like like healing and like whoa. Um, so the yes, that happens. Um, I was doing a lot of beginner workshops, so that doesn't happen as often in a beginner space. Uh, okay. What happens more often is that people come in in an analytical brain space. And I actually did this at an event where I was walking people through an exercise and this couple who are both engineers oh really God. were having a hard time connecting. 
And I finally had to look at, you know, he was doing okay. She was like, not. She was just, I could see her all up in her head. And I said, okay, here's the deal. This is the time to have the experience. You can analyze the experience once it's done. You need to stop trying to analyze it. You need to just have it first. And she was like, oh. And then she could drop in. And that worked great for her. And so, you okay. know, him, I had to just uh, had to work a little bit more to sort of get him into the experience of being in his body and in his senses and feeling things rather than mm-hmm. thinking about what he was feeling. Right. So there's a difference between thinking about an emotion or an experience and having the emotion or the experience. Right. It's yeah. Different. Yeah. And so, you know, that was the the key there. But yeah, I mean, there's been there have been in so Tantra um often comes with pujas i'm just throwing new words at you guys all the time so pujas pujas or puja pujas puja puja okay i I knew someone had named that way back when i that would be interesting but she that that was that that was her name her name was puja wow way back when i i that's all i remember so a puja what does is that a, mean it's a sacred connecting space so it, okay it, it it's a sacred name if she had that as her name um but it's a sacred connecting space and so you know you often will sit in yab yum or you might sit cross cross-legged across from each other if you're not wanting to be that close but it's a space where you have an inner circle facing out and an outer circle facing in of people and people rotate and you have connections with whoever's in front of you. Now, this is not an orgy. Let me be clear. This is often fully clothed, mostly, usually fully clothed. Um, but it's a oh. place of connecting. And so it is a way of connecting with a bunch of people and to be able to open to an intimate space and to have, and it's it's in a safe container, right? You know, you're you're in a space where people are, con- you know, holding the container and there's somebody who is facilitating and there's a whole thing there. Right. And so, you know, sometimes in those spaces, when people have not been able to open and be intimate with someone that can trigger an emotional release and a clearing. And, you know, sometimes you'll see tears there. Sometimes you'll see people completely lock up and just go into themselves. And they're like, I can't do this. And it's like, oh, okay. no requirements. You know, I've had people sit across from me in a puja and all they would offer me is a single finger. And they're like, I will, I will touch your finger, but I'm not going to look at you. Okay. I'll take you what, take what you are available to give. That's fine. I've had people who are like, nope, can't do anything. Just going to close my eyes. I'm like, okay, that's fine too. So you just, you know, it's, it's meeting people where they are. And if if someone has had like a, I'll say like a sexual trauma mm-hmm. that's happened to them, yeah. how does that affect their ability to, I guess, kind of get into the tantra, or is there an an opportunity for healing of those type of things through this kind of work? I was I, thinking the the white path, the healing path, yeah, is is was wondering about. Yeah, so I would not start with a puja as an opening volley into doing uh, recovery from a trauma of that kind, because it is it is an intense space. It's not bad, but it's it's likely to bring stuff up. So you know, the uh, exception okay. to that rule would be if you are really good at processing your own emotions, if you've done a lot of inner work on yourself, if you've done a lot of healing. <sighs> then you experience the trauma, then maybe you could do that because you already know how to do all the other pieces, right? Mm-hmm. But as a starter point, I would not do that. You know, um, okay. is, is it possible to work with your partner on this? Absolutely. It would be a great space to do with, with your trusted partner that, that you know that you are, are connected to, that you feel safe with, that you, are, you can trust. All of that, yes, I would not go to a public environment and do a public puja. I would, that just is yeah. asking for trouble, right? Um, okay. To work with, if you don't have a partner and you're trying to work this through, to work with a 
certified Tantra professional who does this work and is trained in this work. Could you do that? Yes, but I wouldn't expect. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Be gentle with yourself. Yeah. Cool. Oop. And then she pops off right at the end. What can I say, kids? It happens. But we definitely covered a lot of material on Tantra, all the vocabulary words. I don't even remember how to spell. So, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm going to wait for a few minutes to see if she pops back on. Um, but she probably had a, well, let's see, that might be in the rainy season. So she may have had a storm coming up. That popped her off internet real quick. But um, let's see. So on the Tantra stuff, um, let's see. Cover the masculine, balancing the masculine and the feminine. Masculine holds the solid container. Feminine is the water within. Y'all can, y'all already know I cannot offer any guidance on this whatsoever because I'm learning how y'all do. But on a side note, if she ever does write her memoirs and y'all suggest names, I think that would be awesome. So just email her at kelly at kellysparta.com. Don't tell her I told you to do that because she'll probably forget about this podcast. Um, but that would be great, um, especially if she picks one of the pen, pen names to use. So here she comes back on, and we're going to wrap this session up for Tantra. Let's see. We have the white path and the red path. And... Masculine's holding the solid container and the feminine's the water within the container. And there she is. Okay. <laughs> it did. Mine's keeping going. I don't know. Mine's, that's a complete sentence. Mine's keeping going. <laughs> yes. Um, I honestly can't tell you because <laughs> you just popped out. I was about to say we're, we're we're wrapping up the tantra series here, um, or tantra t tantra talk today, and that we've learned a lot of vocabulary that I don't know the spellings to or can use properly in a sentence yet. But <laughs> well, you know that's my but, job is to keep exposing you to new things, and I do yes. say that in a punny way. Thank you. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> So, yeah, the reason that I didn't go too heavily into the white side of Tantra is because a lot of what we do in the the podcast and the in the uh, Welcome to the Woo or the Woo series in general uh, is effectively the white path in Tantra. So we talked a lot about the red path because that's just is the thing that I don't usually talk about. But yeah, the the white path is a lot of that. There's also the Kundalini yoga, the you know the tantric yoga things like that. Um, and raising of the kundalini is another piece of the puzzle um, in terms of activation. So the kundalini is a, a snake at the base of your spine. It's an energy snake at the base of your spine. And when you awaken it, it, it slithers up going back and forth between your chakras up the spine. And it activates a whole okay. other channel of energy. And so tantra practice often will awaken the kundalini. Uh, yogic practice can awaken the kundalini. Kundalini yoga in particular is fo okay. focused on the, the kundalini energy, right? So that's actually one of the things that we're going to do at our retreat is uh, activate the kundalini. So we're going to not... Well, okay, then. In general, I'm going to... Oh, 
open that energy up for all of the participants. So, yeah. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> That'll be another story for another time, kids. <laughs> Have more Kelly awakened her. You want to be more magical and more powerful? Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be one of the first things we do. Oh, cool. Is it one? It does it open and close like a chakra, or once it's open, it stays open? Okay, okay. We're <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, very good. Yes, yes. All right, so if there, if all of this sounds Oh, and then she popped off again. Okay, so <laughs> we will put it in the show notes as far as how to, if you're interested in attending the um, retreat that she's going to have in 2024, um, more details on that to come. But uh, we'll put in the show notes um, how to let her know that you're interested. Um, I'm going to say email her at kelly at kellysparta.com. That's K-E-L-L-E at K-E-L-L-E-S-P-A-R-T-A dot com. Um, and let her know that you are interested. Um, I know there's going to be so uh, so many slots uh, availability, um, and she's going to keep it right on the smaller um, population of our attendees rather than you know thousands of people. Um, that way, you have a more intimate setting, um, and you have a more intimate interaction with her and the course material that she's going to have. And she's also going to tailor that course material specifically to the attendees. So if the attendees are more on the newbie side, you'll, she'll do the Kundalini Awakening and then some more newbie kind of stuff, you know, in the intermediate, right, um, magical things. And then if you're more advanced practitioners, um, do the Kundalini. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, see, I screwed that one up. Kundalini awakening and then more advanced magical practices so um, she'll be able to tailor that for you and so um, I don't know any other details on that yet um, otherwise I would tell y'all but I don't know yet so um, hang on sign up for newsletter because um, I know she's going to be putting out some publications um, in our newsletter so you can go to kellysparta.com and sign up for the newsletter that way you'll be in the know and I'm still waiting for her to pop back in so I'm trying to tell y'all other things let's see so oh here she comes again all right so whenever she pops back in I'll ask her the best way to um, so that you can let her know that you're interested in attending the retreat as soon as she pops back in, here she's come. She's coming. She's she's in. Her big toe is in the door. There she is. All right. So that connection. I don't know what's going on. It's <laughs> that's okay. I was telling them all about the retreat. Ah, okay. And if if <laughs> and but I didn't remember other than to email you at kelly at kellysparta dot com that they are interested in going and that I knew you were going to keep it to a small number. So yeah. that it's not like humongous and they have an intimate setting. 16? 16 beds and I've already got four people who have said they're coming. So Okay, y'all. So what is the best even, way? I haven't even scheduled it with the retreat center yet. I love it. I love it. Well, I told them to sign up for the newsletter. That way, you know, they'll, they'll give a heads up on that. But then how do they let, what's the best way to let you know that they're interested in going to it? Uh, just email me at kelly at kellystarter.com. And, um, Woohoo, I got it right, y'all. Put you on the list. Uh, and um, so here's how this is going to go. The people who get first dibs are going to be the people who are in program with me first. Um, and then after that, 
uh, then then it'll I'll open it up to the people who have signed up on the I want to be informed of the next retreat list, so they'll get the first notice after that. And then after that will be the people on the mailing list, and then it will go out to the public. So, um, you know, that's how that's going. Mailing list and um, the Facebook group will get it at the same time. All right. There you go. So more details on those will, you know, be coming um, yeah. as she gets yeah, everything I, reserved I, and together. all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, I, I know where I'm going to hold it. I've already talked to them sort of in general. I just need to get the quote and set the dates for solid and start to get some information together for the pages and write up the sales page and the whole shebang. But yeah, I've already picked out good stuff That's it. to do and i'm super excited about it we're going to be getting into physical presence practice for ourselves to get you into focus and in presence so that you can do your magic better and we're gonna we're gonna sing up the sun every morning so we're gonna have some Ooh, time. fun yes it is one of my favorite practices that i i uh i'm stealing from another retreat that i used to go to um it's fantastic it, it's one of the best ways to start your morning is you get up in the morning before the before dawn and you just put your voice together with other people and and there's a whole round that we do that's to dona nobis pachin and uh which is uh you know it's three-part harmony and it's oh, so beautiful it's so beautiful and it, it's just a lovely practice and so we'll be doing that every morning and and there's going to be you know uh, tours that we're going to do and we're going to do energetic work i'm going to do sound healing work for people um uh, yeah there's going to be a lot of really cool stuff i'm i'm super excited the the actual you know what are you going to learn piece is going to be customized to the people who attend because you know i need to know yeah. people are and in, in their practice and what they're interested in learning about so we'll definitely be doing some group practices because that's something you can't do from home right um no so yeah. you know we're definitely going to do some group practices together to create containers and stuff yeah and honey don't worry about it. if you can't sing like me it, it, it's in your tone deaf it's okay she's going to teach you the three-part harmonies don't worry about it, it it's all right just mm, you're you. going to be all right the sun doesn't care the sun does not care <laughs> that's right the sun does not care so yeah all right well before i lose you again what is your kellyism for today <sighs> Find balance within before you try to find balance without. There you go, kids. All right. Well, that's all that we have time for this week, folks. Tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules, here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, y'all. Bye.